feel free to ask me any question you want. Uh, what was going on? So today's session is about innovation and entrepreneurship using food as an example. Uh, how many of you are familiar with blockchain here? One. Okay, congratulations. Uh, any blockchain related ones, we have a conversation about it. Or we will also share more about blockchain. Yeah. Today's one is to use food as an innovation. Make it simple, easy, and uh, simple entrepreneurship at what level you can do that. Uh, any other commandments I need to cover? Introducing myself to my firm. Okay, so our firm is called Arate. Arate stands for Excellence uh, in Greek and Serve Jew. So basically, our firm will be around for a few years and we specialize in innovation, growth, and excellence. Uh. My partner was top student of Harvard, his name is Andrew. And he used to consult for leading New York listed firms. And I used to be part of EDD, I used to be part of Open Set Young Consulting. So I've been doing this for about 10 years already. Part of innovate, grow, and scale. And one of the two things I do is I help small local firms compete against leading national. So how many of you have heard of Sketches, the shoe brand? How many of you are girl generation? The K-pop band. So, Skechers is a $4 billion shoe brand that's listed in America. It's very popular, you see many of the shops in Singapore, around the world. So Skechers partners female Korean celebrities, or Korean or Asian celebrities to market their shoes. You'll see some of that, right? So what we did in Singapore was I partnered my client to help him compete in Skechers. So basically he partnered with Girls' Generation to launch shoes that were fairly successful. So this is an example of a daily in life where a small Singapore firm can successfully compete against a multinational. So this is what I specialize in. We do a lot of uh, asymmetric innovation growth at a daily in life. As well as we can see here. So um, feel free to ask me any question you want. And I can see why I do, do my best to answer. Before we begin, any questions so far? Make the slides can be provided. Uh, later I'll send you a link that you just need to pass me your email later. Okay, so because I'm talking about food, I want to set some context that I got some expertise about food. Lah. So this was me last time, I was thin once. <laughs> now you can tell what I got some experience. Lah. This is a 5 kilo piece of chocolate. So I use food as an example and to make sure that it works, I will sacrifice my calorie and eat for you. So I'll use for as an example and that's what So this was about, I think, three, four years ago. Like. This was about two years ago and this is now uh, two more years ago. Yeah, two more years, yeah. So it's increasing uh, positive, positive. Okay, so entrepreneurship one on one. Fundamentally, right? People have problems up. Uh, so if people have problems, right? People will pay for the problems to be solved. I pay for parking, I pay for food, pay for ice cream, pay for chocolate cake, I pay for grab. When we successfully solve someone's problem, we create value. Because this definition of value is quite important. goes down this way. People have problems. When you solve their problems, you create value. Generally, money is given to those who solve the best problems, or solve the most problems, or the best solution for the problem. In some cases, uh, along this way, who gets the money actually is a separate topic. Because sometimes people create the best product, but they must be having to go This is something that many entrepreneurs, many of don't really say, but I'm actually still How many of you heard of the, not Tesla, the company, but Nikolai Tesla, the inventor? So Nikolai Tesla actually apparently invented an infinity electricity car network. 
So this will have cured all energy problems. So Nikolai Tesla is actually a very famous uh, inventor, scientist that was around during Thomas Edison's time. So he's, been, he's dead already. Uh. But basically he, he died bankrupt or he died poor still in, in America. So his invention of creating an infinite energy grid uh, is actually not done. Because we don't have infinite energy grid now, right? But it was proven to have some level of semblance of working. So problems of electricity. The value is almost infinite. So by right, wouldn't he get a lot of money? But he didn't. Uh. So Master, you know that just because there are problems that you can solve them and you probably be the best person. It, there are a few steps in between. And oftentimes in this step, it gets tricky. Because this is common of go market, monetization, and how to protect yourself. Another example. How many remember that fidget spinner thing? That no spin on the head one. So, one of the first few iterations of this fidget spinner came out on Kickstarter. You go, go. Then you buy. So, there was a problem. People were very bored, they were very energy. Value, I give up, then you play your own self. Money, I sell to you. Logic, right? Not smooth, right? However, problem, value came out. Oh, okay. The fidget spinner. Right. So the problem, if you energy, the value, you want something to spin, to use your hand. But right, you just sell to them, because you're the creator, you can monetize already, right? Makes sense, right? But how many of you uh, bought or saw fidget spinner at Pasarala, Lazada, $2, $3, so on so forth? So the guy who identified the problem and created the product for it wasn't able to actually monetize it that well. But, okay, this is the later stage. Uh. Hackathon and etc. cover this one first. Because if you do not res res resolve this, it's a bit hard to get here. Because it's sometimes it's a step by step. Okay, no, it's only Sorry to interrupt. I, I think talking about that, if you were to patent it, then that would solve the problem. But the thing is, patent costs lots of money. Correct. Such starter, you don't have the money to patent it. Once it's protected popular, it's too late to patent I agree. Patent costs a lot of money, and the other thing also is that it's not proven that you put on Kickstarter, right? Uh, some country, what's the recording? I'm recording. <laughs> a lot of my sessions are not recorded, so I can just. Some, some, some places are able to, your know, Kickstarter cabinet any yet, uh, they can launch the product for you already. So they sell already. No, 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 no. Because the Kickstarter guy, he spent the time and energy and R&D to do the marketing here. But if I am the other person, I will just see hey, the top 3 Kickstarter campaign right now. Ah, I got factory, this validated already, the problem, the value, because people throw money already, because the number don't like. Okay, I just reverse engineer. Lah. Then I don't need to do any marketing. Lah. The marketing all done for me. Lah. Then I just, just retarget those guys. Because I roughly know, because I see. <coughs> So that is an example of the monetization. Uh, but today we are talking about this problem first. This side, this side. You can see right. Then the market, marketing guy, knew what he was doing, doing the best marketing, and then came up with this guy to do the production. I agree. And solve the problem. Yeah. Right? So it does, um, so sometimes when you do your hackathon, then you will have a team. Uh. That's why there's a go to market strategy, there's an innovation, there's a planning and growth component. That's how you do your revenue capture. So each of these has various components and hackathon will cover, we hackathon will cover all right. Next one, we want to talk about value. So just now we understood that problem, value, money. Then you generate the most value, you get the most money. Uh. You solve the bigger problem, or you're the best guy to solve the most problems, or you're the best solution for that problem, you get the most money. Following this, correct? Follow this, follow this. 
So now, how much do you guys pay for water? So, context of Singapore. So what was the cheapest you pay for water? One bottle of water, mineral water, like that one. How much? A dollar. A dollar? Okay. Anyone pay cheaper than a dollar? How much? Fifty cent. Forty cent. Okay, great. So, so now we baseline already.
Please don't stop any differences. So let's just go through the first one first. The first one is entrepreneurs will improve their skills. Employees will improve their weakness. So how many of you during interview session, right, or interviews with your staff, or you go interview, they ask you, so what's your greatest weakness? The question got asked, right? So at pitch session, the entrepreneur, they never, they started to ask this one. They only ask, uh, what are you really good at? What can you monetize? The concept of context and framework will be different. Second one is that an entrepreneur focuses on getting shit done and getting stuff done. Getting, producing something is better than thinking about it. But if your employee sometimes messes up, often times you're thinking about, hey, don't make a mistake. Because if I make a mistake, uh, then my CV got black mark. Then my performance appraisal got black mark. Then I don't get my bonus this year. Then my boss will use it to hide me. Even if you never do this, you never do it. He think of the one thing I never do, but he forgot the nine other things I do well. So become risk adverse. So, okay, before I actually continue on, there is no good or bad between employee and entrepreneur. I just want to set it very clear. It's just maybe different skill set for different things. How uh, many you know Tim Cook? Apple CEO. Okay. Apple CEO is an employee. Because he's employed by Apple. So, just to be very clear. Steve Jobs will be different because Steve Jobs started Apple. But Tim Cook is AI come in as a job one. Eric Schmidt, former CEO, uh, managing director of Google, also certain as an employee. Because she was a hired CEO. So, that entrepreneur you all know, la, like Elon Musk, la, so on and so forth. So, very clear, there is no good or bad wrong or right. Both are also successful in either view. Just that sometimes the mindsets are different. And it's dangerous to you, or it's not ideal to use an employee mindset in the entrepreneurial field all the time. Subsequently, if your um, employee and your firm is a bit more conservative or not so progressive, it may not be so ideal to have an entrepreneurial mindset. So, entrepreneurs focus because they know they got burn rate, uh, they got limited funds to make it work. So saying no is actually more important than saying yes. So saying yes to do anything that I cannot do. But if employee say yes to everything, because they do everything, do, like, do well, they can get promotion, get bonus, they can change job. If that feels too sad, at the expense of my company, yes, win-win. I just have win more than other so, entrepreneurs delegate, employee DIY. The boss asks you to do it, go do it, and learn all. Okay. I learned really a good way, I got a skill set, I can change job. Then, employee or entrepreneur monotask, focus. Employee multitask. For those of you who are working in an employee role or somewhere, you know, how many times are uh, your previous in the past or you ask your staff, hey, can you all do this ABC more, extra item, multitask? Yeah, so same on multitask. So, entrepreneur try or risk, employee avoid risk. Entrepreneurs believe in seasons, employees believe in balance. So, this one will be debatable. But if this is similar to balance, work-life balance, etc. so on and so forth. This is one fundamental one. Uh, entrepreneurs hire smart people. So this one essentially focuses on 
these four companies right now, which are the movers and shakers and startups for some will say this century or for this decade at least. All of them have first started, they didn't have any resources, but they were resourceful. Airbnb has very little or no properties under their name. But they were very resourceful to go monetize and to go see how they could solve problems for both property owners and travelers. Uh. And they just were resourceful enough to go and find the gap in the solution. So, sometimes always say not enough resources, but sometimes it really could be not resourceful enough. So, moving on. Any other questions? Any questions? Any comments? Okay. So, moving on, uh, we want to talk about startup and corporate. Uh. What's the main difference? So, which picture better represents a uh, startup? A or B? How many of you say A? How many of you say B? Anyone? So these pictures all taken from stock image. In most traditional conservative context, this is the typical version of startup. Tech uh, some guy wear a shirt, then wear headphone, then laptop, uh, then like clothing. But some people will say this is corporate because of tall building, they may be owned by the company, so on so forth, Wall Street, so on so forth. But the reality is um, startup and corporates, right? There is no real difference. It's just a perception and a definition. But it's still chicken feed. Agree? But it goes back down to whose problem are you solving? Potentially to the lady, when like we start the process, to the farmer, I need to feed his chicken, feed his animals. Problem not very, problem quite small, got a lot of various things. Just feed la, buy whatever, you just feed la. The chicken part, use cow part, use whatever part, also don't care. Animal feed is very great. So the value will be not so strong. But the person eating the Phoenix claw and what's the tradition? Imagine going to a dim sum restaurant. Phoenix claw is your favorite item. Then you go there, then you, say, then you ask, hey, Phoenix claw one bowl. Then the uncle tell you, hey, sorry, it's healthy. No more Phoenix claw sold out. Then you want come out of whatever else said, right? So you're willing to pay a premium, right? And people pay $2 3 for Phoenix claw, proven. So you see, the problem you solve is linked to the value you generate between white monetize. Then the next stage, right? is the anti-aging beauty industry. Beauty is a billion, billion, billion in the dollar industry. Yeah. Even one segment itself is a very billion dollar. So many the problem. I want my skin to be firm, buoyant, bouncy, nice, value, eat collagen, pao ya one, or at least get some value of it. Proven, very proven, let's say. If it works for this celebrity, it work for me too. So the demand and the value are high. After it monetize. But it's still, chicken feed. It's just how you can monetize it. So this is an example of entrepreneurship and innovation disruption along the way. Like, this is a progression. So this cosmetic one, I didn't know until my <coughs> friend tell me that I also found out. But this is an example. So any questions so far about this? So let's, yeah. Would it be better to sell as a vitamin cream chicken feed? Vitamin, so the other one before that, right, they sell chicken essence. <coughs> it costs the premium higher. But apparently, this one, chicken has some level of vitamins. But. No, sell as vitamin cream. Take everything. Oh, it's more sexy. Uh. I can get next time, so I'll manage vitamins. So the reason why. Oh, it's great. <laughs> But it is not just that. You see, it's an extraction of the collagen. It requires detailed processes. 
Yes. See, it is not like, oh, you can just write it out. I agree. There is a trade-off as well. It is a trade-off. Yeah. But if you're the chicken seller, you're the chicken maker, because you already sell your chicken to KFC already, you have your chicken feed left over. So if you have your chicken feed left over, anything is a surplus. Anything is a surplus. Because previously you were disposing of it. Then you sell to the guy who makes animal feed, my price. Then you sell to the other guy who makes Phoenix for one premium. But when you sell to the prospective or beauty industry for either making kills or makeup, it's a higher premium. And you're not the one processing for them. The technology and the... Okay. So I have more, uh, let would say, clients to send to. Correct. And so then trade war in America, China, so I sell to Korean uh, colleges. Okay, that makes sense. Because remember, your, your specialty right now is chicken, yes. not makeup. This like Shell uh, and the petrochemical, the petrochemical firms, they drill for oil, right? Then how many of you don't know that a lot of your makeup and plastics use a lot of petrochemical hydrocarbons? They are not plastic specialists. They are oil drilling specialists. So they focus on their niche and they monetize. But then they sell, then they know who to sell to. Then naturally, if they want to sell, they're selling petrochemicals for, for makeup. Then they sell at a premium, then it's better. It's better, it's better. Then you want to make plastics cheaper? Mm. Any other comments so far? Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's take a quick okay, five minute break. So let's see whether we can come back about 9.45. Okay, actually, 9.42 can. Let's see other stuff to cover. Okay, wait, let's take a quick five minute break. You are also assuming the champions is a piece of gold, the modulus, the quality. It should be like certain chicken to Yes. I agree. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But if I am a chicken manufacturer with hundreds of millions of chicken, I will choose what is the best. Uh. So if you could come down to the point like where do I earn more money selling my chicken to the chicken store? Or do I earn more money selling my chicken to Because if chicken big version is a game. Then you are right, I'll focus on the chicken, the best version for me. It should be a certain breed. Then uh, the chicken meat here is extra one, like this whole this whole law or whatever. AKA what happens to the elephant and rhino. Uh, the horn is, or rather, okay, the shark, shark, shark more, more to be correct. The shark fin more important than the shark meat, but uh, more to work. So that's why they take the fin and they throw everything else. It's very bad. So please don't eat shark fin. Bad, bad. Bear, bear. Then don't hunt for rhino, don't hunt for tiger, bear also. Even though it wanted, uh, the pelt can be monetized. So, this is one of the few things. Are you your idea even close to reaching your potential? Something that we want to emphasize a bit. So, that's not Sebastian's idea. There are many people who are addressing this problem already. But it potentially can give you a better solution. Get monetized. Just like Lana Kick Shop already dominating Singapore in the 1980s, 1990s, early 1990s. But hopefully, chocolate came in soon. Okay, so another example we're using Nutella. Who have eaten Nutella before, right? How many eaten Nutella? So I attempt to use the number to make it more relevant. How many jars of Nutella do you think are sold a year? Go, 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 go. Fifty million. Okay. Anyone else? Close the number wins a price. Three billion. Jaza. Any other three billion, fifty million? Anyone else? One hundred million. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, so my 
training because of our food and because I like food always. <laughs> Oh, but can I eat inside, right? Uh, okay. I think this one can, uh. okay, as okay. long as it looks Yeah, so close to the number will get this price. Okay. That's 55 pounds. Which is close to 50 million. What's it, 50 million is now, uh? 50 million. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 5,000 times there. A lot. So, is this good for Pharaoh? Any of you heard of These are the main products of Pharaoh. Pharaoh Group only sells these four main products. But guess, so they're listed in Italian company. Guess what their they are Italian company. But it's privately owned. Guess what their revenue is? <laughs> Anyone guess their annual revenues? 1B? So, Dennis says 1B. Uh, anyone else? 800. 800. 800 million, okay. Dennis says, I would say it's 800 million. Anyone else? Want to guess? Remember, participation goes value. You can get to the euro. 10B? Close. 8.4 million euros. So, I just sell chocolate spread, uh, 8.4 million euros. Now in this context, uh, you think it's a worthwhile business to actually look at how they done it. So remember, it's a chocolate spread. Just like chocolate cake, uh, some people cannot tell the difference. And I only have four, okay, technically I have five products. Nutella, Kinder, Bueno, Ferrero Rocher, Tic Tac, and a uh, premium chocolate called Tortons. Which if you never have it, it's not very premium either. <laughs> Or brand awareness not very good. But everyone can have that up. Okay. So, this is an example uh, of something worth looking at because this goes against the PNG, JNJ model where you have so many different brands. This one, I focus on one niche, one product, uh, I make it 50 years. Because that has been around 50 years already. It's a cocoa hazelnut spread. It's not rocket science. Uh. There are other brands of cocoa hazelnut spread out there. But however, Nutella for being the king for 50 years, I think that's something worth learning, isn't it? So, one of the secrets they do is they generate their own demand. I, give, I create Nutella cream. Nutella cupcake. Nutella, donut, Nutella, spread. So all these are examples of how Nutella creates the demand because it sells both B2C and B2B. You can use Nutella officially in your product branding or in your product, in your cafes and so on and so forth. So by making it luxurious, by making it decadent, and by making more people use it, you self-promote. The biggest jar of Nutella I bought was uh, 2 liters, the big one. So I don't think you're there. I think. I think you're almost there, but about 2 liters ones. But if you go to those commercial events, uh, you can buy them in bigger size on it. What's the Because they use it for the cake, uh, it's also warm. How many, guess how many results do you get when you type Nutella in Google? Yeah, no. 22 million. That's the thing. So this is how they constantly generate demand. Because now it's more to the power of the where they don't need to generate demand directly. They just need to generate demand through people who are selling their products or using their as an ingredient. We call it the ingredient strategy where you make it so sexy. There's even 60 plus Nutella in dessert recipes of Nutella things itself. That is. And Nutella offers them recipes with Nutella. So this is how they generate the demand. This model very easy copy one. Basically, you do the same with bananas. You 
do the same blueberry, we do the same with jam, we do the same with peanut butter. But how come Nutella are doing so well? So for some of those, so this, so this portion is about monetization. Uh. When you have a decent solid product, right? We have a decent solution to the problem for the chocolate or hazelnut cocoa product. This is how this portion is monetized. Okay, any questions to answer before?